Hi and welcome to Conversations with Robin. As you know, we've been on the Great Walk to Beijing with Olivia Newton-John filming a no number of programs. Obviously, it's to raise funds for the Olivia Newton-John Cancer Research and Wellness Centre, which is going to be part of the Austin Hospital in Melbourne. And on today's program, we have Ed McDermott, and Ed is the president of the Ludwig Institute, God, it's a mouthful, in, uh, in America. Ed, thank you so much for being on the program. It's a pleasure to be with you, Robin. How are you holding out with this walk? Well, I'm, I'm having a tough time keeping up with you. Oh. I'm just glad that your last name isn't Runner. <laughs> I've got a lot to live up with sometimes <clears throat> with that surname. You're a heck of a fit guy, though. Well. Do you, you've been doing a lot of preparation for this. I, I had to. Oh? It's a lot of fun. It's, yeah. a, it's a real privilege to be a part of this initiative, and it's, it's been great to be with the people this week. How do you think we've all been holding out generally? Uh, I think remarkably well. We've uh, had some very challenging terrain, mm -hmm. um, some challenging weather conditions, but some beautiful sights and great camaraderie. And today's weather? Today's weather snow quite unexpected, but um, we all muscled through it. We did indeed. That, that scenery, though, was just stunning, wasn't it? Absolutely stunning. God, amazing. The horizon with the snow in the mountains. Mm. Hardly expected to see that in, mm. on April Late, day, late April weekend. Well, they actually promised us we would have the hot weather, the cold weather, the this, the that, and everything. Every single part of it's happened. Olivia doesn't do, disappoint. <laughs> not if, not yeah. at all. So, the Ludwig Institute. How did the Ludwig Institute first come to be? Ludwig Institute was established in 1971 mm -hmm. by Daniel Ludwig. Daniel Ludwig was a New York entrepreneur. He had made his fortune in a variety of businesses, um, shipping, oil and gas exploration, coal mining, uh, cattle ranching, hotels. And uh, in 71, he dedicated his international fortune, that is all of his companies outside of the United States, to cancer research and established the Ludwig Institute for Cancer Research in Switzerland. Why cancer research? What was happening for him in his life that he would go down that track? Mr. Ludwig did not have children, mm -hmm. and neither he nor his wife were victims of cancer. Mm -hmm. But in uh, 1971, President Nixon, who was a friend of Mr. Ludwig's, declared the war on cancer in the United States and established mm -hmm. the National Cancer Institute. Okay. And the thinking is, though, Mr. Ludwig never particularly shared what the motivation was. But at that time he established the Ludwig Institute and our principal focus has always been on supporting research outside of the United States. So it was a natural complement to what was going on in the United States in the Nixon initiated by the Nixon administration. Well, that's interesting. It's always, it always fascinates me how something gets started and what the person behind it, you know, what their agenda, so right. to speak, is. Okay. But a particular facet and, and, and real attribute of the Institute that uh, has its genesis in Ludwig's thinking was the fact that unlike the conventional model at the time when people were establishing research organizations like this, they tended to focus all the activity in one location, mm -hmm. create another research institute planted in one place. And Mr. Ludwig was shrewd enough to appreciate that cancer did not honor the boundaries of country or creed or color mm -hmm. and thought that an international initiative could benefit cancer research. And so we have been faithful to that um, thought of his in terms of structuring the institute. And today we have 10 major research operations spanning four continents on the globe. And we are uh, currently exploring establishing our 11th research branch in Singapore, which would be our first in Asia, and we should be having that up and underway in approximately 18 months. Wow, so he was quite a visionary then. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Did he have any um, medical background? Or, I mean, how was his thinking that he kind of went, this has got to he, be global? He, he had an eighth grade education. Okay. He was 95 years, 
years old when he died in 1992. He tended to take on great challenges. Uh, he, he was the father of the super tanker. Mm -hmm. um, he always was pushing the boundaries of technology um, in various of his entrepreneurial endeavors and he created the institute and really charged it with a mission of doing that in cancer research. But he did not have a scientific background, though he was very much self-taught engineer, as I'm told by his engineering colleagues. Wow, incredible. Well, before we hear more about the Ludwig Institute, how did you get to be president? What's your background? My background is the law. It's not science or medicine, so it's unusual for someone of my background to be in this position. Uh, I was doing a lot of legal work for the Ludwig organization in terms of its commercial operations in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. And in the late 80s, I was asked by the chairman of the Ludwig organization, who was a close confidant of Mr. Ludwig's and uh, uh, an established businessman in his own right in the United States to come aboard and help him run the organization. And at that time, I had very little idea of really what the Ludwig Institute was about. But essentially, in late 1989, there was the Exxon Valdez accident, which people may remember this terrible accident in Alaska where there was a super mm -hmm. tanker with a, had a massive oil spill. And as a result of that, the United States Congress passed a law that created unlimited liability for anyone who was involved in the chain of transportation. At that time, we had a large fleet of super tankers as part of the corporate uh, assets that underpin the Ludwig Institute. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that change in the law, those of us who were in responsible positions felt that we had a fiduciary obligation to protect these precious resources for cancer research and not have them subject to some sort of penal judgment that might come down the road in the event that there were an accident in the future that one of our ships might be involved in, though they were chartered out to major oil companies. Mm -hmm. So we began a very wholesale but systematic liquidation of these assets and then taking those funds and deploying them in a much more conventional endowment format. And I am responsible for that area of our activity as well as ultimately now the overall administration of the Ludwig Institute. So it was that convergence of events that really got me much more involved in the Ludwig Institute and its activities. Okay, so when did you become president? I became president of the Ludwig Institute in 1995. Okay, so it's like about 13 years? Yes. And has that been like a huge learning curve for you? It's been a terrific learning curve, um, but I have been aided by some very, very capable scientists who are always kind to me <laughs> and, and very, very... Uh, um, carefully explain the principles that are involved when I don't understand them. They're very patient about doing that. Uh, it's a global enterprise, so we have to manage a lot of time zones. We, we uh, deal with a variety of cultures and legal systems. So it's, an, it's a really exciting, dynamic um, job, but it's a terrific privilege because we're working with people who are so motivated to making a difference in this disease and, and for cancer patients. Okay. How many people employed? Inst Institute. Ludwig Institute has over 850 clinicians, scientists, technicians, and support personnel. Uh, they're committed to addressing the complex problems presented by this disease, and their sole focus is cancer. Okay. We, we are not interested as a primary occupation with other disease states, though as we say, if you're hunting for diamonds and you find rubies, you don't throw out the rubies. <laughs> so if we find, we make a discovery and it has meaningful applications in other areas of medicine, be they cardiovascular or the like, then we license those out to companies who can develop them and bring them to patient benefit as well. Okay. We'll take a break. When we come back, Obviously, there's so many questions one can ask in this area. One of them would be, though, what the Ludwig Institute feels is the cause, if there's such a way of describing it, of cancer. So please stay with us, and uh, we'll come back and find out some more about cancer and the Institute with Ed.